It's Christy Lou Stout is following developments from Hong Kong. Joins me now. So, Christy, uh, what does this ruling mean for China's property sector and the world's second biggest economy? Well, Michael, this move could send shockwaves through China's capital and property markets. This is what we've learned earlier today. On Monday, a judge here in Hong Kong ruled to liquidate Evergrande after years of failed attempts to restructure it. Now, announcing the ruling, the Hong Kong judge, her name is Linda Chan, she said this, quote, it is time for the court to say that enough is enough, unquote. Uh, Evergrande shares were trading down as much as 20 percent before the hearing, before the ruling was announced. Uh, trading was halted in China Evergrande and its listed subsidiaries across China. Now, for years, this company, Evergrande, has been the poster child of China's nationwide property debt crisis. It all goes back to 2021. It sent China's property sector into this tailspin when it defaulted on its offshore debt. It is the world's most indebted property developer. It has more than $300 billion worth of liabilities, $240 billion in assets. And analysts say that this decision to liquidate the company is good news long term for China's economy, but will be painful. This is what we heard from Andrew Collier um, with Orient Capital Research. He said this, quote, Evergrande's liquidation is a sign that China is willing to go to extreme ends to quell the property bubble. This is good for the economy in the long term, but very difficult in the short term. And then we heard this from Gary Ng of Natixis. He adds this, quote, it is not an end, but the beginning of the prolonged process of liquidation, which will make Evergrande's daily operations even harder. Uh, he goes on to say, investors will be concerned about whether there will be a snowball effect on other developers as the queue to liquidation is long. Now, Gary Ng there hinting that all eyes on Country Garden, another indebted property developer as well. Now, this liquidation process for Evergrande, it could be very, very complicated given the many authorities, the many parties involved. There had been questions about whether officials inside China would respect and uphold a ruling from a judge here in Hong Kong. But ahead of the decision, we did learn that China's Supreme Court and Hong Kong's Department of Justice, they signed an agreement of reciprocal recognition to enforce this judgment. Back to you, Michael. Mm. So uh, go back to the basics. What, what happened to Evergrande? I mean, what went wrong? Evergrande um, is the poster child of China's deepening property debt crisis. It's also been the poster child of China, the downside of China's growth at all costs business model that's been in place for decades. You know, for decades, the times were really good for Evergrande. It sold so many different property developments. You can recall the pictures we could share with you of unfinished apartment buildings across China. There was a time when consumers would purchase these buildings even before construction was finished. And during these good times, that was when Evergrande mounted and just gobbled up loads of debt, $1.300 billion worth of liabilities. It all changed in 2021. That was when the Chinese central government authorities realized that property prices were too high. They made a move to curb excessive lending and then Evergrande later that year defaulted on its offshore debt. That's what sparked the property crisis, and the property industry has not been able to recover since. And Michael, as you've heard many times as we've been talking about Evergrande over the years, this is significant because some 30 percent of China's overall economic activity is in the property industry. Back to you. Yeah, very, very big deal. Christy Lu's down in Hong Kong. Appreciate it. Thanks so much.